and welcome to another submarine chat. This one is going to be about the Chinese Navy. They have a lot of classes of submarine. I'm going to give you an overview of the different types that are in service. So the Chinese Navy is called the PLAN, the People's Liberation Army Navy, or the Navy of the People Liber People's Liberation Army. Um, I'm just going to call it the Chinese Navy. So I find quite interesting is that China operates types of submarines that some other leading navies, such as the US Navy, choose not to. Um, so they've got a much more complete range of submarine types. They have ballistic missile submarines and attack nuclear powered attack submarines at the top. So the classes that are roughly equivalent to the Ohio class and Virginia class in, in the operational context. They then have a set of non-nuclear submarines that the US Navy chooses not to have. Um, and these potentially give them some advantages inshore. And it's maybe a factor of their geography. It's also cheaper and they can pump out a lot of submarines. They actually have the most AIP equipped submarines of any Navy. They are working on large drones and swimmer delivery vehicles for sure. I, I would say that in every category where the US Navy is also present, the US Navy is ahead both technologically um, and in overall capability terms. However, it's very interesting that the Chinese Navy uh, continues to invest in types of submarines that the US Navy doesn't, and some people feel the US Navy should. Um, so it's going to make this the story a bit more interesting. I'm going to run through the different classes of submarine in the Chinese Navy, just to give you an overview. Starting with the SSBNs, these are the ballistic missile submarines. They carry um, nuclear armed intercontinental ballistic missiles and provide a second strike or retaliatory capability to, to China in, in terms of nuclear deterrence. The reason it's got a big sort of bump or, or turtle back behind the, uh, the sail is because there's some missiles in there, very large missiles, um, 12 intercontinental ballistic missiles or submarine launch ballistic missiles as we use in uh, sort of naval parlance. Okay, let's talk about SSN, so nuclear powered attack submarines. Main type is the Shang class. Um, 093, you'll see bottom left that the free in 093 is normally written with Roman numerals. Um, these are China's most advanced submarines currently. They are roughly the same size as the Virginia class, generally seen as not as good. They're, they're noisier, almost certainly. Um, they also carry significantly fewer weapons. They also have three of the much older Han class. These were essentially the first generation Chinese nuclear powered attack submarines. Their reputation is that they're very noisy, probably true. Um, they're now towards the end of their service. China operates um, SSP, so AIP equipped. AIP stands for Air Independent Power or Air Independent Propulsion, it's sometimes said. That essentially gives the submarine an additional power plant that it can use to operate submerged for extended periods of time. So it doesn't have to snorkel so frequently. Um, the cost of that is that it's very slow. It doesn't give a lot of power. So it's no way makes a submarine comparable to a nuclear pad submarine, but it does add significant capabilities to conventional submarines. The main class is the Yuan class. These are quite an interesting design. They're double hull. They're the largest class of um, AIP submarines in the world in the sense of most built. The most recent version of this has a angled, distinctive angled sail. This is quite interesting. It's often likened to the Swedish A26 class. Um, and it probably relates to reducing its radar signature when it's on surface. Other than that, submarine is relatively typical, has a large amount of its internal volume given over to air independent power. Um, and just to touch on the, the point about the the Swedish submarine. So the Swedish submarines on the left and Chinese one on the right, they're in no way a direct copy, possibly influenced by the Swedish boat, but, but I wouldn't say it's a copy. And additionally, um, China was experimenting with this sort of technology as far back as 2010, probably earlier. Um, they, they fitted it on a much older submarine, possibly experimental. We don't know whether all 
UN class submarines going forward will have these sorts of distinctive sail, we will see. Okay, another type of submarine are conventional submarines without AIP, sometimes described as SSKs, depending on how modern they are. These are two Song class, um, excellent uh, blog, check it out, Chinese Military Review. I chose this picture because there's two versions of the same submarine and with distinctively different sails. So the newer one is on the left with the full sail and the older model has the sort of cut back sail. From the side profile, it looks like this. They're pretty basic submarines. They're seen as a bit dated now, but they're, they're not all that old in, in real terms and probably decent capability. They also have some Russian uh, Kilo class submarines, three batches. The first, the 887 or Project 887, um, is an analog, sort of very similar to in capability to the ones in, in Russian service at the time. The more modern 636 and 636M are digital, probably can carry um, cruise missiles and so on, Russian designed cruise missiles. Also in service are some much older Ming class submarines. These uh, were, these were built um, a bit more recently, but they're essentially 1960s uh, Soviet technology. Some of them have more advanced uh, sonar, etc., but they're still not to be, you know, they're not top end boats today, but they remain in service. Let's talk about some special submarines. First one is the Type 032. This is the largest non nuclear submarine in the world, um, but it's not a typical operational submarine. It's a test submarine. It's designed for testing ballistic missiles. That's why it's got that, that sort of drop keel and uh, there's one, maybe two missile tubes in the sail. It also has other experimental uh, fits, maybe AIP, um, a, an escape pod in the sail, things like that, which China was experimenting with. So it's just cheaper to have a dedicated non-nuclear test submarine than to do the tests on the on the real nuclear submarines. This is a mystery submarine. We know from satellite imagery that China built a midget submarine in Wuhan um, a few years ago. It hasn't been seen since either in satellite or any other um, uh, source. So we don't know what it's for. Possibly it's for um, underwater engineering. Um, so working on seafloor as essentially a spy sub, um, possibly it's for special forces, possibly it's just for training purposes. We don't know, but it has not, it has not shown up since, which does suggest that it's doing something that's interesting or covert. Submarine I'm particularly interested in is the sailless submarine. This was built in a Chinese shipyard a few years ago, a, sh a shipyard closely associated with building cutting edge Chinese Navy vessels it's not a it's not a sort of a, a you know someone's a crazy experiment this is a big submarine it's still smaller than most um regular submarines about 50 meters long but uh, you definitely call it a full-size submarine and it's the only one in the world with this sailless type sign you see it's, the sail basically is just a hatch a small bump left um many navies u.s navy Russian Navy have experimented or, or considered this in the past. The US Navy is still considering this. If you hear about inflatable sails and things, this is the technology they're doing. China already has one. I think the biggest takeaway here is that China is well capable of um, very large scale experimentation and innovation, um, things that they don't normally get credit for. And I think this is, um, you know, this is probably for me, one of the most interesting and impactful of all the submarines um, in, the, in the Chinese Navy. Whether it's actually commissioned in Chinese Navy, I don't know. I think it's just an experimental type. Okay. Also, there's large uncrewed underwater vehicles. This one, the HSU-001, caused a bit of a stir when it's created. It is not as large as, for example, the Boeing Orca. It's, I'd describe it as a large displacement as opposed to extra large UV, um, but it can do uh, reconnaissance missions, things like that. Also, China um, has some sort of swim delivery capability. This is not publicized and um, there's no, there's very little reliable information, but this video, this is a still of a training video. 
it shows a large uncruised, uh, sorry, a large swimmer delivery vehicle, um, roughly similar to the uh, STV Mark 11 or Mark 8 in, in US Navy service. How many they have and how they deploy them, we don't know, but it does, they do have that capability. Could just touch on future submarines. Um, expect a new ballistic missile submarine and a new attack submarine, the Type 096 and 095 respectively. Also improved 093 submarines. Um, the, the latest model is likely to add vertical launch tubes for a substantially increased cruise missile capability. That's the expectation anyway. There are no reliable pictures out there. This is my um, guess, essentially, what to look out for. I wouldn't be surprised if they have X form rudders. That's definitely a trend. I would be more surprised if they switched to a pump jet. Um, we haven't really seen that any any good signs of that in in China. Um, they like to be larger, better able to operate in the Indian Ocean, and so on. Okay, thank you very much. This was unscripted. It probably shows it's not monetized either. So please share. I don't know how many views it'll get, but hopefully it's useful. Gives you an overview of the Chinese Navy. Thank you very much.